If there's one thing that I recommend you go and learn and spend your time mastering, it's masking effects. Pretty much every effect that I've seen involves some level of masking. Now, he uses masking techniques as pretty much a staple. He's heavily relying on having good quality shots with a lot of masking effects to really make impressive effects, which in some ways makes them simple, but it gives it a lot of impact. One thing we get right at the very start here of the video is this effect in the background that I refer to as bad TV. Now, the reason it's called bad TV is because that is the name of the effect that you search for and use inside of After Effects. Now, there's three different types of bad TV effect. The one we're referring to specifically here would be more the Venetian blind, which gives you those lines that sort of run across the video here. And the overall result is it makes it look like it's being played back on a TV screen of some sort. Getting the right sound effects is almost just as crucial as getting the right shots for these cinematic films. Now in my course, we talk a bit about sound effects and the impact that they can have on your final videos. But before you watch the rest of this video, I highly recommend if you haven't already, going and checking out Eric's Indonesia video that I'll link to in the description below and just take a little time to listen to the sound effects and the way that he's layered them up in this particular video. This is a great little transition here, a morph transition where he's morphing between two people's faces. So he's transitioning from this person into another person here. Now there's two ways that I know of you can kind of achieve this effect in After Effects and there might be more, but the one way that I know of and that has worked for really morphing shapes in the past, and that is over in After Effects to use the reshape tool. Now what the reshape tool does if I turn on these masks is you can draw a number of masks around an object and you can basically stretch it the way that you want to kind of morph two layers together. So in this case, what I've tried to do is just match this person here into this shot here of the statue just by trying to line the two figures up. I've also used a little bit of a fade here to get that morph transition. This type of morph transition is really good for when you have two objects that you're trying to line up. Now I'm gonna be doing a, a more detailed tutorial on this to really walk you through all the steps, but I just wanted to kind of quickly give you an idea of a tool that you can use in After Effects to achieve some sort of similar result. These here are telling After Effects that I want to move these masks from this layer into this layer here, and it's kind of stretching that image you can see as it's transitioning through. The other great effect here, are these lens transitions. Now we've seen Eric do these before, and he does them really well. I've done a basic tutorial already on how to do some sort of lens transition, mainly this transition here where you have this sort of black line that moves through. And it's really to represent kind of a lens change or something like that, where you're getting that blurred sort of dark pattern that moves across your video. And it's really good for just transitioning between two shots and it's really effective. Here he has a more detailed version of a fire stick or something similar moving across the shot. Now, if I had to guess, I would say that this is digital. And one little detail that he's added in here is just the reflections in the eye. And because that's masked or it's got a bit of a feather on the edge, that lighting effect is almost lighting our character here as it moves across the screen. So it's just these little details that you don't necessarily see on the first time, but when you look closer, you can just kind of see them, like those little specular highlights almost in the eyeballs and things like that. Just really help sell these effects. Here he's got another great little attention to detail, which is this blinking eye. A simple way to do that would just be to draw a mask around the eye and then just basically stretch that mask as you animate it closed. Here's a really great series of shots that are just all layered over the top of each other. If we looked at this one a little bit closer here, he's just layered a series of shots over the top of each other with a lot of masking and feathering, which really makes for a really interesting sequence here. 
So he's got this fire shot that's in the foreground, and then we're really seeing through that fire where he's got maybe a second shot in the background of our character who's also holding a fire stick. So there's a lot of things going on here. He may have even laid over some of these little specular sort of fire embers floating through the air just to help give it even more depth. And then that transitions beautifully here into a nice masking transition down past the waterfall into our jungle shop. Now, if you like these breakdowns and you wanna learn more about how these content creators create effects in their videos, you can also check out my Motion Effects Pro course where I go into a lot more detail about how to create your own unique style, a lot of After Effects techniques, and I'll also show you how to make your own effects yourself. This is what I call Eric's signature camera move just because I know a lot of creators move the camera, but he's just doing it in a way that it just feels very organic. And he spent obviously a lot of time perfecting this, and it's something that is just done really, really well. That's something that I'm personally really impressed by is just the level of detail that's gone into that. He manages to make the camera really feel like it's fluidly moving through the scene. The best way I would describe it is almost as a digital gimbal that he's put in the scene and he can move it however he likes. But he's got that really nice sort of smooth camera movement over the top. We have another great shot here that is shot sort of at night time and we've got this night sky in the background with this really detailed moon. I'd say 100% based on Eric's previous videos that that is a digital moon. And if you downloaded a really high quality PNG of a moon, you could drop it into your scene and then set it to say screen or a different blending mode to help it sit into the background. And then you can just add a glow effect straight over the top. Now, if you're interested in that, I already have a tutorial, which I'll link to in the description below, which shows you how to do that. One thing I notice in this entire video is just the color grade. It's something that I've noticed when I read through a lot of his comments that people are commenting a lot about the color grades in his videos. He's also now released a LUT pack, which you can go and buy, and I highly recommend checking that out. I've personally gone and bought that pack myself, mainly to support these guys in what they're doing. They put a lot of time and effort into these videos that we all watch for free. So it's about giving something back to these guys because they do put a lot of effort into them. But also this LUT pack that Eric does, he also includes a video which shows you how to properly use the LUTs. So if you're interested in color grading, I highly recommend checking out his pack. Here we have another great shot of this digital lightning effect, which has been added over the top of the video. Now lightning seems easy enough but there's a few things that you need to focus on. The attention to detail that really sells digital lightning as a realistic effect. Now, one way this could have been done is because this looks very realistic, I would say that he's probably got a video of real lightning that either he's filmed himself or he's gotten somewhere else and he's basically put it over the top of this cloud with a bit of a feather that runs through the middle here to transition or really blend the two shots together. Now in my up and coming module of my course, I'm also hoping to get together a video which will show you how to make realistic lightning effects. One of the things we're going to talk about in that video in a lot more detail is about trying to get uneven lighting. Now when you put effects over the top of clouds, it just looks fake. There's little subtle things about how nature forms these things that make them look realistic. And we need to try and replicate a lot of those in the computer. One thing that you can see here in this lightning is the fact that when you see these bolts here in the background, you're getting these little glow effects that highlight the cloud. Because if you're looking into a cloud, you're not directly seeing the lightning bolt, but you're seeing that glow effect. So you need to kind of keep that in mind, as well as the lightning bolt is not going to run perfectly down with no breaks in it. Like here, the lightning bolt's coming down, it's going into the cloud disappearing. We're still getting that sort of highlight effect and then it comes down through here where we're seeing a little bit of a break. Another thing is it also highlights the cloud in different ways. As you've got different thicknesses of the cloud, if you've got more cloud in one part than the other, it's going to be, appear darker. 
then so you get all these uneven lighting effects and it's those things that really help sell the finished effect if you're trying to add digital lightning. Earlier on in this video, I spoke about this particular sequence here of these shots. Now over in Photoshop, I'm using my graphics tablet here just to highlight a few of these frames, just so we can break it down a little bit more closely. Now, if we watch this sequence once more, we can see how this butterfly here is transitioning into this light. There's another few things that in particular I've picked out in this scene because it really highlights how really good masking techniques and layering effects really work. The other thing that we've got here is we've got these ferns that are in the foreground of our shot. When we move over to the next frame, you can see that he's kept these ferns from the original shot here but he's also fading in his second shot here underneath whilst keeping the background, which are all these ferns here in the background that they've been kept all the way through the shot. The one thing that's really impressive about this masking and the point that I really want to make in this is that he's isolating the layers to make them three dimensional. So what do I mean by that? I mean, he's taken his main video shot, he's cut elements out to reveal a layer underneath. He's added or he's fading in his second shot, which is this shot of this guy here. And then he's layering in the original shot underneath that and almost creating three dimensional layers. So a good example of where this doesn't work is when you just take two shots and you just transition from one to the other. Now all the elements in this shot are not flat. They are made up of different layers. So we've got a background layer out here. We have a mid ground layer and then we have our foreground elements with the butterfly and these leaf layers here in the foreground. And this is that attention to detail, which I keep talking about in my course, where you really see the difference between say an entry level effect versus more advanced techniques. So it's something that I really want you to think about, not just in a two dimensional, try and think more three dimensional. Always think of a foreground, a mid ground and a background element. You're transitioning two mid ground layers together or you're transitioning two foreground layers together because it's gonna give your effect a lot more overall depth and make it look a lot more interesting. Here we've got some really nice layering effects again laid over the top of this eye. We've got what looks like some smoke effects happening in here. We've got an overlay of a fire transition effect and then he's got this really nice macro shot here of an eye. He's obviously done a bit of work here masking out this eye and when they're all layered together, it just makes for a really nice transition. So there you go, guys. There's my breakdown of Eric's Indonesia video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos just like this one via this playlist here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.